Grab a six pack, sit back and prepare to laugh. It's Joe Dasher's podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back and prepare to laugh. It's Joe Dasher's podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back and prepare to laugh. It's Joe Dasher's podcast. Podcast. Grab a six pack, sit back and prepare to laugh. It's Joe Dasher's podcast. Podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 239 of the Drunk Dash Podcast. I'm your host as always, I'm Tyler, and joining me, we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Sir Colonel Gables. What's up, buddy? Yo, Tyler, I am doing all right. Busy week, capped off by Black Friday, and I finally have a day just to, just to basically just fucking relax, man. Just I mm. had been so tired over the past 24 hours that ever since getting off of work, I've simultaneously not only bought like <laughs> a couple different games that were on sale and saved a bunch of money but i've slept from like about 8 p.m last night all the way up to like almost 8 a.m today that it's like oh my god so much sleep so much awesomeness but but man man that it's it's been pretty cool though i mean other than like the the long work week and stuff i had so much adequate time to spend with my Nintendo Switch over the past couple days because it's like I bring it to work now. I brought it to work for like two days in a row. People are like all in awe about it because it's like, oh, oh my god, it's a Nintendo Switch. Oh, what you playing? Oh, oh, that's a different way to play. It's like, what um, you buying? And what you selling? But <laughs> I'll buy it at high price. <laughs> never get, never get old. It's like twenty years no. in. So, so awesome. No man, we're still gonna be quoting that game ever since. Um. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, man, it's been all good. How about you? Doing all right, man. Uh, Doing the uh, long weekend because uh, of the uh, Thanksgiving holiday here in the United States. Uh, got Thursday, and then my work is also closed on Friday. So I got a nice ah. little four-day weekend out of it. And like you, uh, went out, enjoyed some of the Black Friday deals, bought some stuff. Uh, yeah. What'd you buy? Uh, oh, okay. All right, we'll jump right into it, I guess. Yeah. Um, Going to non video game stuff first. Okay. Uh, Amazon was doing a bunch of like uh, movies on sale. Amazon Prime, so I bought a few digital ones. I bought uh, Wonder Woman. It was all right. Uh, Hitman's Bodyguard. It's got like Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson. Eh, it's all right. These are like eight dollar movies. And then I, I picked up Star Wars Episode Seven, uh, The Force Awakens. I've seen it like five times. Uh, so watch that again. That's still really good. And a couple other movies. I can't remember what else I buy. But a couple of sci-fi movies. I don't know what they're called now. Um, oh, Passengers and Life. I get to watch them. They're recent. And then, uh, but, oh, also, and Gables was here for this one. Yeah. I bought three fidget spinners. <laughs> uh, You're fucking insane. I know. I'm so stupid. <laughs> this is why I have credit card debt. Um, <laughs> they were they were 20% off, and they're like, they like $4 a piece. Uh, I bought a... Uh, a bowser luigi and mario fidget spinner uh well they should be here in five to seven business days um yeah and then um going into gaming uh i bought i bought uh how many games i bought i bought three games and a couple of side things i got first off i got three i bought three uh one year ps plus um things they're like 30 bucks or 40 bucks sorry three of them yeah, one's for Christmas and then two are for me. I, I usually buy okay um, two every every time around this year. I don't know why. Uh, I did it. I I shouldn't say usually. I did it two years ago because I got like, a gift card for Christmas and I bought it. I bought a year and then I, I just previously then I bought another year or something like that. Yeah. And I, so I was good. I'm good until like I was good until March or April of 2018. You know, I'm like, oh fuck it, might as well buy a couple. So I bought a couple. And uh, yeah, one's gonna be for my sister for Christmas. I buy her one every year for Christmas, and yeah. uh, you just wait till it's on sale. And then um, gaming wise, um, one of the games I bought was not uh, a Black Friday deal, but they had a GameStop deal where it's like you got an additional thirty uh, percent when you're trading games. 
So I traded in a few games and I bought the I bought some PSN money, and then I bought uh, Fire Emblem Warriors for the Switch. Really? So, yeah, I uh, just got it today. Wow. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about. I'm not really gonna say whether or not I like it too much or not right now. Uh, I'll say I like it right now so far. I'm only like I'm, like, I'm on chapter three. So I am not very too... surprised that you actually bought this game, considering you hardly, if not even, played that much Fire Emblem to begin with. I don't think I've ever played a Fire Emblem game. No, um, the closest I ever got to was Smash Brothers. Um, but I liked Hyrule Warriors a lot. If you listen, I think uh, what was that? 2014 Hyrule Warriors came out. It was like eighth or ninth on my Game of the Year list that year. I love that I game. I can vouch that is a good game, though. That yeah. is a good game. That that's again needs to be remade for the Switch. No uh, shit. You, you have to remake it. Just fucking put it on there for like twenty bucks. I'll rebuy it. Yep. Um, that's a fun game with all the DLC and everything. I would totally root for that. There's some cool DLC stuff that came out for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I picked it up. I you know like I said, I like Terror Wars a lot, and I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll get that. I had some extra cash, um, uh, store credit, whatever. And then uh, with my uh, PSN money, I picked up a Hidden Agenda. Uh, it's it was 15 bucks. Normally I think it's 20, so not a big discount. It's a PlayLink game <clears throat> on the PS4. Um, right. You know what those? You know what the PlayLink games are? Okay, a PlayLink game. I've heard about them, but I haven't really attempted to though. So basically, what are they? Uh, it's like a it's like Jack in the Box, where like you download an app or whatever. And you put like a, you, you play the game on your cell phone. Uh, you play the game on your PS4, but then, like you pick. So it's maybe the people that made it. Um, is the same team uh, from Until Dawn. Yeah. It's the same company. Uh, obviously, uh, I love Until Dawn. Um, they have a couple of PSVR games come out here soon that I really want to play. Um, but uh, yeah, it, I heard it's really good. It's only a few hours long. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't gonna get it because I. It's like normally these like, the these games they do like so. Sony's doing this. PlayStation doing this old PlayLink thing now. There's like like half dozen games out there now. You play the game. It's like their attempt at doing Jack in the Box or Jack in the Box. Uh, what's that? Jack? You don't know Jack? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> the board game. So I don't know why I got Jack in the Box in my head. Uh, but um, they're doing their own thing because like the you don't know Jack has like a bunch of like party packs you can buy yes. on, on on computer and on Steam on PSN and all that uh, that people play and they play with a group of friends with the, with the cell phone and they like pick the answers to their trivia games uh now playstation doing that with a bunch of their own type of games a lot of trivia games or weird like pitcher games and this one's kind of like until dawn where you get to like pick what you do and like ch- choose what you do and um this one's actually uh I, there is a single player mode um i don't have I, I guess you play it in groups you can play it you like you like discuss or you pick like, you vote on what you're supposed to what you're going to do um and this one you can actually just do one player so um i heard it's actually pretty good like i said so i went and picked it up uh 15 bucks and i got gable's favorite game of all time i was that ghost recon wildlands oh my god <laughs> it was 20 bucks good so luck like, ah, okay <laughs> ah, i played a little bit of it played about uh half an hour 45 minutes of it so yeah uh, i'll discuss it more later well, you're going to have to tell me how much you're actually uh, liking the game and stuff like that. I mean, I liked it up to where I actually platinum the game, but... Oh, yeah. I'm going to platinum it twice. I'm going to create yeah. a second account and I'm going to play it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. <clears throat> yeah, so I, I went and picked that up. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's everything I got. Nothing too crazy this year. I, I was pretty good this year. Uh, normally, I spend a lot of money. I, I was very tempted by... I went to games, When I went to GameStop and there was like... They had to buy two, get one free. I'm like, ooh. And I was looking around, but like, yeah. unfortunately, when they drop the price, like when they do like the sales, like, um, they had like Injustice two for fifteen bucks, brand new, uh-huh. but used, it was still forty. So I was like, oh they, they brother. Didn't... Yeah. So I, I get, you know, they they it's only on sale for the weekend, so they don't want to drop the price of the used game. But uh, otherwise, I probably would have picked up a few other games. They would have dropped the price of some of the used games um, there, but yeah, I avoided that because every year I usually go in there and buy a few games. And I'll play like one of them, or I'll play like a, a couple hours. I'll, I'll just like, all right, I got one game I really want, so I need to pick two more that I kind of want to play, um, to like get get the free game. So this year, I I, I thought it was pretty good. I got a couple games. It's got a few games yeah. like I I want to play. So go ahead. Oh yeah. So for Black Friday for me this year, it's actually was kind of a bit different. I didn't go through like say GameStop or I didn't go through the online stuff. No. I decided to do a little bit of the down low, and I just took a random, like, uh, spin of the bottle, pretty much, and I just uh, went to, into Walmart, like, after work on uh, 
you know, on Black Friday and stuff. I got off work like around three, so I go, I go forth and like I'm going around inside of Walmart and I'm finding these games, going through their game stuff, their game section. I end up picking up not one but like four different games. I got one for the Switch. I basically got all of the games I got this year were basically games that have released from this past year. So I picked up Rayman Legends, the definitive edition for the Nintendo Switch, for Good about game. twenty bucks. That's a great <clears throat> game. I have it on Wii U. I don't care. I have it on Switch right here, and I just want to play through that thing. But uh, the good news in the matter is I picked up not one, but three PS4 games, all of which are either fantastic games or like just games that uh, I've wanted to try out for a while. One of them was Neo. Neo is sort of like a action hack and slasher or something like that that's more akin to say like a Dark Souls-like experience. But it's by, I think it's by Team Ninja, I think it is? I'm not sure. Yeah, the Ninja Gaiden guys, I think. Yes, Team Ninja. So I'm really interested in seeing how this game is. I've heard nothing else about it since released, since it was released this past year. I've heard it's gotten some good scores here and there. And the action is like balls hard. So that's definitely going to be something down the pipeline I'm going to try. But the two other games that I was more interested in that I picked up... I picked up Injustice 2 for 20 bucks. That nice. was a fantastic deal. That's a great game. And what's even better is I picked up Wolfenstein 2, the new That's Colossus, even game. for 30 bucks. So it's like I got all of my all of the games that I got at Walmart, I got for half off. I basically saved $100. I spent 93, but I saved $100, which meant I would have Honestly, if they were at their full retail prices and stuff, I would have spent... Oh my gosh. I'm thinking about it right now. Is like, the new Colossus sells for 60 Injustice 2, they had marked for like 50 initially. And then like, Neo was 40 And then like, I know that Rayman game would have been 42 So you got 40 40 is 80 Then you have like the 50 and 40 right there is the 90 So that was at least about close to over like 120 130 something bucks there. So, by saving at least, oh gosh, pretty close, pretty close if not to like a hundred or something like that. Yeah. That is just crazy to me. But, yeah. but it does give us quite a bit of stuff now to talk about towards the end of the game of the year. Because, quite frankly, all of the new stuff that I've gotten that I've released this past year, now I've got four more, well actually three more, that I could technically play... And discuss about near the end of the year, which that was my main thing. I want. I went in there. I looked around, basically to see if I could find games that released this past year at a good price. And I was fortunate enough to find four. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> you got four really good games there. So yes, I did forget to mention though. I did pick up. This wasn't a deal either. I did buy the um, Wolfenstein Two uh, Season Pass. So. Oh, you did. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Twenty five bucks. Uh, so, I, I, I love Wolfenstein 2, and I want more of it. There's four packs, or like single-player stuff. Uh, I think the first one's out now. The second one comes out at the end of the month. And then the, the other two come out in the early beginning of the part of the year. So, yeah, that's a great game. So, that's, yeah, that's I forgot. I just want to add that in there real quick. Yeah, um, but, but anyway, there is one last game that I did buy, and that was not on Black and that was not, like, on uh, the Black Friday stuff at Walmart. It was actually on PSN. I oh. decided, I decided, since looking at the PSN store, they also had a little Black Friday stuff, I decided to pick up the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection, which nice. they were selling for about seven ninety nine. So, 8 bucks for three great Uncharted games. Okay, good yeah. deal. I'm going to go ahead and buy that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to just buy that just to have that just in case yeah i know right it's like last of us i i I own that digitally just in case yes in case i want to go back to it i've gone back to a few times actually but yeah um should we jump on should we go ahead and jump on to what we've been playing though this past week yep yeah sure sorry my voice might crack here and there sorry my i don't i I think i might be catching something i'm not quite sure i woke up and my voice been a little gravelly uh i did not go see foo fighters again so that's not where my voice is a little gravelly. Uh, it's going through stretches. It's like puberty all over again, except not so high pitchy. Uh, 
All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump in the way of playing. Um, I'm going to go first real quick. Um, okay. Uh, I played a few games this week. Um, started off, I, uh, I went back after I finished um, the shitstorm that was Star Wars Battlefront 2. I decided to jump back into Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, and, man, this isn't a bad game. It's a really good game. Yeah. But I, I think I'm burnt on Assassin's Creed games. Really? Yeah. I, so, I like I said, I, like last week, I was around the 20-hour mark. Um, played for another hour and a half. And I'm just like, am I having fun with this? And it's kind of like that Mass Effect and Drama thing, but with Mass Effect and Drama was, was just a bad game. Oh, I don't think no. I don't know if this is. I don't really think it is. Like it, it's got all the core mechanics, and it, it's built upon. What I talked about a lot a couple weeks ago, um, but my biggest problem with this game, <clears throat> sorry, is that is the progression system in this. Okay. Where, um, you let you it's like it turned like a couple of games ago they made it more rpg like where you level up you get experience points for doing missions killing guys things like that and i talked about um a few weeks ago when we were doing extra life where i just I played the game for like six seven hours and i just i just did side quests probably like four or five hours and i just went around killed a bunch of guys did side missions all the side quests i can find uh-huh. and on my level like so they have recommended levels to like for every mission you do yeah and the story mission like and I, I, you can't do missions if you're like you're more than like three levels below it. But even if you're only like two or three levels below the recommended level, it's like just don't do it. It's too hard. You just you're gonna get your ass whooped. And so fairly quickly playing this game after like three or four more missions, I fell behind of the recommended level for just the story mission. I I, I fell behind um, doing it. So I would just like I would do a story mission or two. And then I do a bunch of side missions and side stuff, and get to the level, uh, get maybe get to the level or maybe a level above it, and do a couple side missions and fall behind again. And finally, I was like, "Fuck it! I just want to. I, I want to. I'm, I'm enjoying the story. I want to keep playing it. I want to just do the next story mission." And I was at level 24, and the, le- the recommended level uh, was 28. So I guess it was four levels, maybe more, maybe five levels. I don't know. Maybe you could just do them. I can't remember. But they're, they're red, I think, if you can't do them, actually. I take that back. So, but I don't remember how, how far behind you have to be um, or how for, how close you have to be to be able to do a mission. But I was, I was four levels behind the recommended level, just getting my ass whooped. And I so I'm like, all right, I just need to do some side missions. And it's like, I don't want to do these side missions anymore. They're not fun. They're, they're kind of the same thing over and over again. Uh-huh. Um, the story parts behind them are kind of lame. Um and it's just kind of more of the Assassin's Creed stuff I didn't like in the past or kind of I liked for a while. And then it's just like, I don't want to do it. Like, it's the same missions for like a decade now. And it's kind of what it feels like. And um, I, I was just kind of like, enough is enough. Like, I'm spending, like, if I can just do the story missions, I, I would, if I can just go to that story part, I think I'd be, I'd still be playing this game. I would have finished it. But uh, the, the amount of experience points you earn in like doing the story missions, you get like, 2000 which once you're starting to get into the 20s 2000 ain't a whole hell of a lot like it'll get you maybe a maybe a third or a quarter to the next level but it's like man each of these missions are 15 20 30 minutes maybe even longer um it's like i don't want to spend two hours doing side stuff um just to get to the get to the just to do one story mission so i only have to do another hour or two of, of side missions uh, to, to give you another story mission. And uh, and when you kill a guy, you get like 10 XP points, which that ain't shit when you have to get like 5,000 or 6,000 or 8,000 or 10,000 experience points to get to the next level. Yep. Uh, so you have to kill a lot of guys to get there. So you might kill 15 guys in a story mission, but that ain't shit in, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. And I just, I, I was just like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I just want to play the story. I don't want to do these side missions because it's just kind of like the same four side missions over and over again. Uh, and it's not all that fun anymore. And so I, I, enough is enough for it. I just like, I'm done with it. I'm pulling myself away from this now. Like, like much like Andromeda, but like I said, and this is a really good game, uh, compared to Andromeda, uh, but it's just like I need to just pull myself away from it, and get rid of it. So that's one of the games I sold when I when I went and sold some stuff at a 
um, GameStop today. Um, okay. Just to kind of like, just kind of break myself away from it. Like I had to sell Mass Effect Andromeda to like force myself to quit playing it and get the urge away to play it. Um, and I did the same thing with this. It's just, eh, oh, man, it sucks because I, well, I like that shame. game. It's just level me up faster. That's like if you would have done that or got rid of the level system altogether, I would keep playing this game. But um, never gonna. So after I finished, after I, I pulled myself away from that. I went back to Resident Evil 7. It's a game I've been talking about all year. I mentioned probably a half dozen times over the course of the year about, like, this is a game I gotta go back to play. I need to go back and play it. Like, when I played it back in January when it first came out, I was just not in the mood for mm-hmm. this type of game. And I played it, I, ju- I, I jumped into where I left off in the in the main game, and I was only like three or four hours in. Uh, and I'm like, I'm just gonna jump in and, and plow through the game. And I'm just like, I'm not feeling this at all. Not feeling it. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll start over. You want to see it start over and get go through the beginning again. Play for another hour. It's just not feeling it, man. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe I was wrong. Like, it's a good game. I'm not discrediting that part, but I, I don't think it's my game uh, that I want to play. Uh, so I, I like, I, I can't, I can't do it. So it's a bummer because it's a game I've been, like, all year I've been like, I like, I didn't get around to this. And I finally did it and I was like, I'm not feeling it. Um, but there was a game that I felt, and it felt real good. Hmm. I felt it so good. And that's, I went back to Horizon Zero Dawn. All right. And I finally played Frozen Wilds, the new uh, DLC pack that came out earlier in the month. Um, I think it's 20 bucks now, maybe 15 When I, I, I know when you pre-ordered it. If you pre-ordered it, it was 15 bucks. But right. I believe the regular price is $20. Um, but I went through that over the over our long weekend. Uh, I had a babysit our uh, the puppy Gunner, yeah. Um, pretty much all day Friday. I was the only person that was home on Friday. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So while he was um, napping or playing tug of war with Louie, uh, I got I got a lot of time in on Frozen Wilds, and I actually 100 percent completed Frozen Wilds. There you uh, go. It took me just shy of 15 hours. Wow, that's a lot of for, content. Yeah, just the DLC. This might be. I've always, I've talked about a lot. Um, maybe not recently, but I know back in the day, we would talk a lot about DLC and how it should be and what's some of the best of. And I was I was Bioware always was like with Mass Effect and the original Dragon Age, like their DLC was just awesome. And yeah. like Wolfenstein actually uh, in recent memory, the Old Blood, that was an awesome DLC as well, especially for the price point. This, <clears throat> this might top all of that. Uh, huh. Just from the hour time and just like the, the the how much they added to it and the story that they told. So kind of jumping into it. Uh, so it, it takes place in the middle of the game. You don't have to finish the game. You don't have to. Um, you don't have. You, the only the, the one downside is is you have to still own Horizon. Oh, oop, I'm gonna tap my mic there. Oops. Um, but you still have to own uh, Horizon, like the physical or digital copy of it, so it isn't just a a, a separate thing. Yeah. Um, but the recommended level for this is thirty, which you can get to fairly easily. Um, it might, it might, it'll take some time. I should say fairly easily. Uh, I put um, about twenty nine hours into it was my final uh, counter for this game when right. I beat it initially, and I was at level thirty five, and. Um, so a little over, you're going to level up a little more, uh, you know, a little more to level an hour. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, I finished it up. I was at like level 53 and I, wow. I was at, my counter was, uh, 43 and a half hours, 40, just shy of 44. Um, so yeah. Uh, so kind of the core thing is of this game is, is that, um, you, you, you find this tribe. So it's just like, to the north of like the original map you just pop up in the game and there's like this exclamation point you go talk to this person and it tells you about uh the banuk which is this was is are these these people um they're up in the mountains so kind of i don't know if it's really a spoiler i don't know if it tells you that or if it's something you just find like you don't really find you can easily look this up or like you can know about it is that a lot of this game horizon i believe the core map takes place in like uh like utah and um huh. is it utah oh shit i think i forgot but um fuck it's like wyoming or utah or something like that but anyways so the frozen wilds takes place in the yellowstone national park 
What? But it's it's like two thousand years later. Yeah, two thousand years from now. Um, yeah. So there's an active volcano there now, and it's like smoking and shit like that. And they built like this base inside of the volcano that huh. uh, in the mountains of where Yellowstone National Park is. Uh, I can't remember where I think it is Wyoming actually where Yellowstone National Park is. But anyways, um kind of the core thing is is that these uh it is like there is this new type of enemies and there's like they're the 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 machines that you're fighting are more powerful and more angrier and uh more offensive than ever. Where uh and there's this thing called the daemon uh that is like uh cause people to attack them. And the cool thing about I always like about Horizon is people think like these like so horizon like i'm not gonna spoil anything about the, the original game good but there's like these labs and these bases that people find and like and it's been a couple thousand years and they just find these bases yeah. and they have like the computer voices uh kind of like we have siri now and whatever and you the ai that you you can talk to and to them they think it's like a god they don't understand that it's an ai they don't know what ais are and so they talk to these computers and they're like the, this ai and it's like oh it's the spirits and uh, there's this thing called a daemon that's like a virus that is like taking over one of the AIs and making these machines, um, all these machines crazier now than ever. And all these new machines are coming out. Yeah. And um, so there's a few new machines that you can find in this game. Uh, one of them is like a giant, like 50 foot, like grizzly bear type fucking machine. Uh-huh. And it's called a fire claw. Um, there's a frozen claw fire and there's a claw. fire claw. Nice. Um, one's like shoots out fire, obviously, and the other one shoots out like ice and shit. Um, and man, it's like it's what I love so. It's more of what I loved about the original Horizon um, regular game is that walking through the world, like the world is not empty. There's no empty space in this game. Like, everything is just like there's always something in it, and it's like whether it's enemies or fucking just shit you can find. Like, there's always something going... You don't go too far without finding something to do. Um, and whether or not you want to do it or not. Like, my, initially, when I first started playing the game, I remember the original game, it's like, man, there's always enemies everywhere. Like, I'm always trying to avoid enemies because there's so fucking many. Now, I'm like, I'll, fight, I'll take you all on. I'll fight them all. And... <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> um, this is more of that. And so, you find these fire calls. Throughout the, and it's like, it's got... Just like in the original game, it's just like... They're kind of some of them, like some enemies are more common to find in the regular game, but it's yeah. always like a big fight feel. And right. I, like as like a wrestling fan, I love that big fight feel. And and like, or like just as a fan of like great boss battles, this game is just like a shit ton of like big boss fights all the time that you want to do. Because like you fight like a Thunderjaw, and like they're hard as shit, and they're beatable, but it's like an endurance race, you know? Like you just got like you got come in prepared. Have a, a plenty of health and health packs and arrows and all the shit you need and um, yeah it's it's just great it's it was great to be back in that world um, it's hard to talk about because it's it's late game stuff uh, you don't have to finish the game to play this like I said you gotta be a little thirties what they recommend um, but this is a game right here I want I want to talk about that the, the the way you level up you level up like crazy in this game especially if you, if you like um, you fight enough in the open world. Uh-huh. Um, I, I, I went up twenty something levels, and I only did like eight or nine missions. There's only there's not like a whole hell of a lot of missions in there. Um, if you just went through like the regular campaign, like that's in this game, it might take you five six hours, but it's just still a whole hell of a lot of content for uh, a fifteen twenty dollar DLC pack. Oh. Um, but if you do all the side stuff like I did, like I said, fifteen bucks, and I went up almost twenty levels in that time. Uh, so yeah, it. This is a game like if it's not, like they have the same leveling type system. They recommend you be at a certain level when you do these missions, but the the rate at which you level up, the amount of experience points you get for like beating missions, um, is a hell of a lot. And the amount of enemies you fight in these missions, you level up quite a bit. I was well above the um the recommended level uh, when I finished the game, uh, finished the campaign compared to where I needed to be for the final mission for that um that that uh the, the dlc so uh if you guys if if you want a reason to go back into horizon um this is definitely it like i definitely i there's actually there was a couple other missions you could do after you finished it the uh the final like story chapter for the for the game for the dlc and i went through and i, I beat them 
all of them. Uh, did all the side stuff I could do in that in that thing. There's only one thing I can't I can't finish. You get the, the, the one trophy I'm missing for um, Frozen Wilds. And it's like the hunting ground stuff. Where you have to like go in and fight waves of enemies. But you only get X amount of uh, arrows. You can only use your arrows. You can't use anything else. And you have to beat like 10 enemies with like 50 arrows. And I keep getting like, I'm like three arrows short every single time to beat the last enemy. And that's the only thing I'm missing for all the trophies. But uh, yeah, wow. it's awesome. Uh, I'm loving it. I kind of want to go back and do um, here when there's some dead time uh, after Fire Emblem, Ghost Recon, all that. Uh, maybe January ish or something like that. I want to go back and just go and get the level cap. I think the level cap is 60 now. Yeah, was that, so the original level cap was 50. And then with the DLC, they raised the level cap to 60. So I'm at 52 now. Um, so I want to go back and I want to get that level cap here. That, that game is amazing. And any reason to go back to it. I, want, I hope we get more DLC. Uh, if we're not going to get in the horizon for a while, I'm glad they take more DLC. Um, that's what I, that, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. That's what I've been playing. Uh, what about you, Gables? Well, like I said before, like I said before, I have been playing a little bit more of my Nintendo Switch. But uh, before I get into like the Switch stuff, I want to say that I did beat a game on my PS4 today. I did Ooh. go through and I did beat Loco Roco Remaster, which was a game that I had gotten all the way back close to when the game first released on PSN. But I had been playing off and on because I wanted to play other stuff as well. So eventually I just decided to like uh, bog myself down and just uh, basically tell myself I gotta beat something this week. You know, I'm starting, I'm literally making a pattern where I'm starting like about 15 or 20 different games and I'm not finishing one of them. And that's one of my main problems I have as a gamer is I start a whole lot of stuff but I don't go through and finish a lot of the stuff that I start. So I go through the last two or three worlds for uh, Local Roco Remaster over the past couple days. I get to the last love, the last world, and basically I am starting to understand a bit of the gaming mechanics and stuff like that. The last world of Local Roco in and of itself, I mean, it's, it's not difficult. It isn't difficult at all. It's just that you have to sometimes fight with the controls of the game because there are times when your little local roco want to try to jump and hop or something like that unceremoniously like without you even controlling them because basically basically how the game works is like what i said before you control the way the stages tilt so you can either tilt it to the left or tilt it to the right with the shoulder buttons if you hold both shoulder buttons together and then let them go the little the world actually goes through and just bumps the little local roco higher into like specific types of platforms and stuff. I can say this right now. It's fun when you can go in terrain throughout like random sections, but if you're trying to avoid certain things, like say like enemies or like 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 specific spikes or something like that that's going to whittle off little pieces of your little local roco, you know, local roco stuff, it can be a little bit tricky. And not so much tricky, but also when there are levels where it requires you to do some precise platforming, sometimes it can be frustrating if you're trying to go up to higher, like, higher levels. A good case and example was a level that I went through on The Last World. I had to try to jump off onto these little flowers, right? These purple flowers that, uh, it looks like you can adequately make them, but... I would jump up and then stuff. I would try to balance some by tilting the left and right uh, shoulder buttons like evenly and stuff. And I would keep falling off. I would keep falling off because I was not precisely on the flower itself. <laughs> and so basically you have to use the controls in order to uh, precisely go through worlds. Especially if you want to try to 100% everything inside of a level. Because the thing about Local Roco is... If you want to get everything inside this game, you got to collect everything that are inside each level without, like, uh, without, like, say, uh, miscollecting specific types of things like these little uh, star eggs or something that you get or these little, like, uh, all the random local roco that you uh, collect throughout the world. You can collect a maximum up to uh, 20 per level. You have to get, like, 5 out of 5 
like, uh, these star egg things or whatsoever. Then you have to try to collect those little creatures called Moy Moy that you have to, uh, populate your little, like, houses and stuff that you can create through, like, finding the pieces that are presented from these, like, uh, these, like, these blue star eggs or something that you find throughout each level. It can give you a little bit, uh, convoluted in how much stuff you gotta collect in each stage. But I gotta say is that a lot of the times when you go through the levels, sometimes it's not really readily apparent that you can find a lot of this stuff. So early on inside the game, I made a mental note to myself. It's like, I'm not going to go ahead and collect everything inside this game. Why? Because it's a lot more fun when you just... It's definitely one of those platforming type of experiences where it's a lot more fun not collecting anything and, you know, not overthinking it and just go through the main game because of how fun some levels can be and how like cheery and certain dispositions and stuff like that but uh alas the last couple of levels in the last world of the game can be frustrating in terms of precision platforming and in terms of uh the way the levels themselves can be structured to where if you try jumping in specific portions, or if you try to fight those little creatures called, like, mojas or something like that, which are basically, like, these black balls of, like, negative energy or something like that that just spew up. They have these tentacles and all this other shit. And, uh, basically, if you can, like, jump into them and stuff like that in order to knock them over or something, but if these if those things get a hold of you or something like that, they'll rip off little pieces of your little loco roco and start eating them. So... <laughs> That's going to affect completion rates. But, uh, yes, the very last portion of that level, of that uh, last level or something like that, you have to do this this unceremoniously, like, uh, boss battle, pretty much. Where the the final boss or something of the game, he swallows you whole, and you have to go through and terrain through his body. And along the way, you got to fight all these random, like, mojas, and you got to fight all these random, like, uh, different things by going through the stages, collect little things here and there. I had gotten, like, literally, like, 13 or 14 Loco Roco, and I lost a good amount, like, maybe six or seven of them because of some bullshit <laughs> precision jumping that I had to go through across these spikes, which I kept crashing into because I had to do precision-wise on this, like, this specific part of the stage. Basically, how it was is I had to time going underneath something like, uh, in the middle of this, like, water section in this level, and if I didn't get it through right, it would, he would, my little local Roka would slide back up and hit the damn spikes, and I could not get to it in time in order for the thing, in order to, uh, capture it again before it just randomly died, you know, it's just one of those moments in gaming where you basically get frustrated because not just of, uh, the way you're playing, but the lay, the way a level is laid out, to where it's frustrating to figure something out. Because you know what you have to do, but the game isn't letting you do it unless you do it exactly a per, like a precise way. So I ended up going through the creature's body and stuff. I went through and I beat the last remaining parts of the local Roka remaster. Credits roll, everything else is good. I have the option if I want you to go back again, which probably not. Probably not, because, hey, I like playing Loco Roco, and I have every intention of playing its sequel game, because, believe it or not, it's a better game than the original. <laughs> I am pretty much done with the Loco Roco remaster, but that takes care of the PS4 side of things on the Nintendo Switch side of things. Played a little bit of Mario Odyssey. I basically played a little bit of it on, like, a Thursday on my lunch break. I collected some more coins in New Donk City that I hadn't previously. Plus, I captured one of those rabbits that were roaming around on top of the skyscraper. Huh. Skyscrapers and stuff like that. And I got another Power Moon, and so that's awesome. <laughs> nice. But, the other game that I played on the Nintendo Switch, and it is basically what I wanted to talk about, since I've spent the most time playing, it was the game that I picked up for $3 a couple weeks ago. Night Terrors. Oh, okay. So, what Night Terrors is, is a endless runner game, which basically you have to kill each enemy that you come across. You basically go through, and you basically, you're a knight. 
you're a knight that has to go through like an endless runner type of stage in the middle of the night and stuff and you have to use your sword and other weapons in order to attack enemies you cannot let a single enemy buy you because if you do there is a little miss meter at the top right hand corner so if you miss three enemies you miss killing those three enemies it's game over but other conditions are you have three hearts as well so if you like basically get uh, you step on spikes or you go through get hit by enemies or whatever the heck that can also be a game over so basically what this game is it's made by the company Nicholas or Nicholas or something like that that was responsible for games like Cave Story the artwork the pixel artwork for this thing looks fantastic the whole overall tone really reminds me of a classic NES game why because the character sprites, the way the characters like react when you like you hit them with your sword and this and that, it feels good. It feels like a endless runner done right. Personally, I mean there are, have been some good endless runner games in the past, but in terms of how addicting it can be to go through and play, I like this one a little bit better than some of the others because I'm actually using like my uh buttons you know i'm using the left like d-pad button in order to like say jump and then fly or something like that through terrains especially if you have to nav like navigate across like spikes and some of these levels and this and that but you can also use the a button in order to attack so you can actually attack enemies with like with actual buttons the only <laughs> thing that's really different is it's like the run button and stuff is like there's no run button. It automatically runs. You just have to attack enemies and navigate throughout your reins. So during the time that I've played, you if you gather enough points in specific ways, you get to unlock other modes. And so what I basically have done, I have unlocked three other modes besides normal mode. All in all, what I know is there are five modes. There's normal mode. There's a sort of like uh, a endless mode where you basically go on forever and stuff and try to gather enough points in order to unlock some other modes and another one was called k mode like k type or whatever the heck it was and basically what that is is you navigate across these spikes you don't have terrain to run across you have to literally use the d-pad in order to fly across you know like time the things plus attack all these enemies you have to level up to level 10 in the stage in order to unlock the final stage. The thing about it is, my first time going through it, I got about 9.5 levels. Because <laughs> I basically basically had to destroy wave after wave of enemies by going through the stage. And that's the only way you can level up. You can only level up if you destroy all these enemies in a row or just go through collective like these power-ups and stuff. My overall impression of having played maybe an hour and a half of Night Terrors across two days, this game is fun. This game is addicting, That's and cool. it's a, definitely a game I want to play more of because this is an experience that I love on the go. I love the experience where I'm progressing fast through a game that's as simple as Night Terrors. Basically, it's an endless runner meets sort of like a uh, a shoot 'em up game pretty much why do i say that is because you basically terrain throughout the you know how like in shoot 'em up games and stuff you navigate across a stage or something like that and then you have to yeah. kill a bunch of enemies it's basically taking that concept only except for the major boss battles it just takes out the major boss battles and you're just endlessly like running left to right and stuff and just killing a bunch of enemies and just going through leveling up certain things yeah it's like uh, Raiden or Raiden, whatever the fuck that game is called. Sort of like that, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Good game. But Good I game. would honestly suggest for anybody who tr wants to try a new game on the Nintendo Switch, Night Terrors is a fantastic option. I loved my time playing it, and I will be playing a little bit more of it. I'm not too sure if there's an end to the game, but I will play enough of it to at least discuss about it for Game of the Year stuff. Oh, shit. It's getting that time, buddy. Yep. We got it. We're about a month out. We are about a month away, and trust me, I got some plans. <laughs> <laughs> right. I actually have some plans. 
I may not be able to finish a lot of games from here until the end of the, like, a month from now. But if I play enough of it, uh, you know, enough of each game, I probably am going to have a bunch to say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could just quit your job and play uh, the game. Uh, right? Oh, I know, right? But uh, uh, I kind of need the job. A, eh, you already got the game, so I need the job, you know what I mean? <laughs> now, you, now you need the time. Yeah, I know. Now I need the time. Yeah. See, so, you had the money. Now you, now you have the time. Now you need the time. So, it's quick job. It's fine. Totally cool. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. Cool. All the money we make doing this podcast, I'll just give it to you, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. That would be funny. <laughs> we, make, but, uh... we make tons of money. We don't make any money, people, at all for this, which is fine. <laughs> I just want to let everybody know that. We, we have made exactly zero dimes over the last four and a half years doing the show. So. That's very true. But at the same point, that's pretty much what I had been playing for the week. That's cool. Um, oh, uh, I, don't, I, I might have missed it. Uh, what's your uh, Power Moon count for Odyssey? Power Moon count is about like maybe 187. Yeah. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. How, how, how far are we into this again? Sorry. Um, how far I was. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Without checking the, the, the Switch count and stuff like that, I don't know how many hours i've put into the game i want to guess or assume that i probably have put about six or seven hours into that game okay yeah it's it it funny actually because you know you can look up your times uh kind of give you a rough idea of the time you spent on the switch yep uh i feel like i'm like man i probably it probably took me like, i probably spent like 20 hours in this game i, I spent like 15 <laughs> not even like not even it says uh 10 hours or more so like oh holy shit i i i Put a, I didn't put nearly as much time in that game as I thought I did, uh, but I, time flew by apparently. But yep. it, I feel like I put a lot more into that. Uh, that's a good game. Um, but yeah, uh, that's cool though. You play more of that Pokemon Ultra Sun? Ultra Sun, I had played a little bit of, but uh, let's see, I I haven't gotten as much as like uh, I basically have wanted to go with at the moment i mean right now i've actually charged a bit of my 3ds because it's been sort of like left at uh, the red or something the past couple days because um, i had been like uh, forgetting to bring it on my <laughs> my rides to work and stuff like that and i just been bringing the switch instead but at this point in time i have gotten done like say with the first uh the first trial and i've actually got through like uh in Sun and Moon, I've gotten past Kiawe's trial and stuff, which, by the way, that was kind of a bit frustrating because I had to deal with both a Alolan Marowak and a Salazzle, which both were pretty much dicks at that portion of the trials. So, at the same point, I am pretty sure about the team that I have right now, give or take maybe one or two party members, but at the moment, I have my... my uh, the Pokemon that I had chosen at the beginning, I had a Rowlet. So I am going to evolve that fully into a Decidueye when I have the chance. I have Kadabra. I have Hariyama. I have all these like these these Pokemon and stuff that I that I would grow that that I would use inside other versions of the game that uh, you know, make things going. I have a Picky Peck, right? But this Picky Peck has a special ability called Skill Link. To where if I use moves that hit two to five times, it automatically hits five times in a row. Nice. So once that thing learns Bullet Seed or learns a move that's going to go ahead and hit so many times in a row, I can get that damage. Like, 100%, you know, 15 times five or whatever. So... <laughs> it's 65. So oh, it's 65 or whatever. But uh, at the same point right there, I got that let's see you got four other things i've tried 75 sorry my math is way off yeah 75 75. well there are other moves too that hit like two to five that could be a little bit more powerful but at the same point i have raised a pichu into a pikachu right but same thing but the thing about it the most that is kind of discouraging and stuff it has a nature to where the special attack is lower upon leveling up and its regular attack is sort of like Mm -hmm. uh grows more upon like uh leveling up meaning that if i try to teach this thing special moves without boof busting you know boosting enough with say like with nasty plot or something like that the a move that uh boosts up special attack by two stages that like special electric attacks are not gonna work at all so it's it's basically 
kind of back and forth. Do I keep the Pikachu or do I give it to something else? <laughs> it's it's just the kind of the thing right now. But uh, I was at this point in time about eight hours into the game. Okay. So Very not cool. too bad. No. Uh, cool. You're you're close to where I got to. So. Yep. Um. Awesome. Well, moving on to um. Some of the news. Not a lot of news this week again. Uh, especially I think with the holidays. Uh, not too much going on. Everybody's out um, celebrating the holidays with the family and not really uh, bringing out some stuff for what's going on. Uh, one thing, uh, a couple things actually, but one of the, one thing, smaller thing, uh, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle uh, has a DLC season, uh, season pass you can buy. It's 20 bucks. Uh, there was two parts. First part came out, I believe, last month or earlier in the month. I can't remember exactly when. It was just more challenge maps if you wanted, if you were into that. But, they recently updated the details. Uh, they so Ubisoft um, put on digitally on the eShop for the Switch uh, a um, like Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battles Gold or Ultimate Edition. Yeah, uh, it's basically eighty bucks. Comes with the season pass and the game. And they and the details in it it says that uh, the new season or the the second part of the season pass is going to come out with a new hero and an additional world. Uh, and the season pass, the second part comes out January 16th of next year. Huh. So, uh, I went from, um, curious to, I think I might, I'll probably be picking this up. Huh. It's not a bad price. 20 bucks. All depends Uh, upon the hero and the world. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm definitely going to wait and see what it is. I'm hoping it's like a Wario or Waluigi or something like that. Oh my God. Um, that needs to happen. Uh, I'm curious what it'll be, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, um, I, I, I love this. Sh- I absolutely loved, uh, Mario, Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle. It is definitely one of like those, well, probably, probably the biggest surprise of the year for me, uh, for a game that I spent probably eight, nine months ripping, uh, when the rumors came out to like, this is one of the most fun games I've played all year. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's much like the, uh, a breath of the wild DLC, season pass that came out it's like all right yeah okay pack number one is whatever but everybody's really buying it for uh champions ballad uh oh. that's the real dlc that everyone wants to play uh which that should be coming out soon too Hopefully we yeah get it is like that. it's supposed to be december so that at, we should be hearing anything probably any day any day now so uh, get hyped for that but yeah i you know I'm, I'm gonna wait to hear what it is i'm sure we'll hear something next month or something but uh i'll, I'll probably 20 bucks fuck it i'll pick that up probably um what about you are you, are you uh think i might pick this up well to be perfectly honest with you i kind of want to know what uh, the last hero in the last world is i mean it could be wario it could be donkey kong it could be like any type oh, of donkey like Kong's a good answer i mean yeah it could be donkey kong as well considering there's a rabid version of uh donkey kong or something like that in the game so if there was like a donkey kong country sort of world or something or just whatever that wouldn't surprise me too much but uh yeah you know i would only venture into pos- the possibility of buying it if i know for a fact what it is and on top of that if i play more mario and rabbits yeah that would help too i I, I hope it's uh, Aiden Pierce, the, the main character from Watch Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. I, I want. I, I kind of want to be like a uh, like. Uh, you kind of want like, to be like a Ubisoft I, character. I, yeah, that'd be great. Actually, I would be. I, I want. I want it to be a Ubisoft character more than I want it to be a Nintendo character. Dude, what if it was Rayman? I dude, I heard that rumor. Like, not a rumor, but people were like like guessing what it could be and like, that's where the wall luigi wario uh but a uh, rayman was a, a prediction that'd be kind of cool if it was like uh a, one of the the world was like in the rayman universe or something like that well rabbits are considerably inside the rayman universe that's so that's, that's the from. thing that's where it came from rayman mm. and the raving rabbits i didn't think about that actually that's a good point yeah because the, the original game was rayman um that would be cool what if it was just rayman from the movie, uh, I would cool uh, that too. <laughs> the Rain Man. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of options here. Uh, I just I don't I want to keep them all open. Yeah, you just basically have like a rabbit form of Dustin Hoffman just going forth. Yeah, 
Yeah, he just goes Kmart or whatever. It's cool. <laughs> the world isn't. It's just Kmart. Oh okay, I, you know what? I talked myself into it. I want it to be Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> what can happen? The the crazier the better. Actually, like I I, I kind of don't want it to be any like any of the Nintendo characters or Rayman Man just because it's almost too predictable at this point. I just want to be the stupidest, craziest, dumbest thing possible. Alex to, to be to happen. Oh my like, god! You just have the rate. You just have the freaking Dustin Hoffman rabbit character, or some pop up screen, or something. It's like, well, it's definitely, definitely, definitely he likes it. It's a Kmart special. <laughs> yeah. Instead of in, instead of like, because uh, each I think each world had like ten different sections. It's just each section's an aisle. Oh my That'd god! Be great. Yeah. Each each level of the world structure is an aisle from like the fucking yeah. like like Johnny's doing the groceries yeah. and shit. Oh my yeah. god. I think this is up there with the most, like, uh, craziest shit that we think we've said for, like, gaming suggestions. And that beats out... I think that actually kind of beats out the whole fucking, uh, like, Stay Puff Marshmallow Man for Mortal Kombat shit. Dude! <laughs> I did. That's still a dream. <laughs> that's still a dream. Dude, they're running out of characters. WB is running out of characters. It's only a matter of time before they go to the Ghost the Ghostbusters bandwagon, all right? They hop in there, like, all right, guys. We need, we need, we need to bring out Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. I don't know who owns it. Is it Lion Gate? It might be Lion Gate that actually owns. <laughs> oh my god! Can you just imagine Ubisoft going through the same route or something like that, and just like go to like random like movie properties and stuff like that, and using random characters and Dude, shit? The crazier the better. I'm I'm all in for this. I am all in. I just wanted a Ubisoft character. I know. Now now I want like a movie character. You just have Man. Dwayne Johnson inside of a random Mario game, dude. Don't 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 <laughs> tease my heart like that, dude. Don't fuck with me, man. You just have the rock come out of there, just start rock bottoming fucking rabbits. Each each <laughs> each each area is like a um is a different movie he's been in. It's a different um, movie. What is in, in the final levels is him in a fucking WWE ring, just fucking yes. do the people's elbow. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I so badly want it to be like, I so badly want like a Fast and the Furious world. <laughs> Fast and the Furious. And then like a, tink, uh, a Tooth Fairy world would be good too. I guess. And then the, there's a Walking Tall world. Yeah. And there's the Mummy. Oh, no, no, no. There's a Jumanji world. Yeah. Justin's all time favorite movie, the re, the reboot of Jumanji. <laughs> if he's listening, that's gonna make him very upset. And there's. Cause... And there's the wait a minute, not the pacifier, but the the tooth, not a like tooth fairy or something like that. But oh, oh there's the gosh. game plan. Oh yeah, there's, there's the game the, plan too. Another good movie. And then it just yeah. culminates in the Scorpion King. <laughs> yes. The final boss is just the rock as like an actual scorpion. It's the he's rock half is scorpion, and half stuff. half man. <laughs> like from the mummy it. too. <laughs> yeah, dude, make it so. Make it so. Oh. I want that to happen. Man, see the problem is our suggestions are just too good, and it's never gonna happen. So we just ruined this game. We're, I'm not gonna buy season pass. Now. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be disappointed no matter what it is now. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man. It's like it just kind of makes me like uh, think. It's like, oh my fucking god, man. The Rock's been in almost everything. <laughs> well, that's ten he years. <laughs> he's not. He, he's in almost everything, and he's still not in enough things. If that makes any sense. Yeah, exactly, man. It's like you have a walking tall world. You have that. And all of a sudden, you have a Moana themed world with him. It's the fucking. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good that'd be good actually you know what would be kind of mind blowing if like say in the new kingdom hearts or something like that they have a moana world then the rock is a voice actor of the one character <sighs> i would buy season I, i'd buy kingdom hearts 3 for this yeah no shit i would too <laughs> I, I was tempted to buying the the remasters of the first two games for like 20 bucks but if the rock's in this game i'm in 100 percent he just comes Fuck on yeah. screen and just says, eh, if you could smell what the rock is cooking with that yes. eyebrow. <laughs> yes, please God so. Please God. There is a oh. God. Oh I will go to God. church every Sunday if the rock is, <laughs> is in Mario, Mario plus rabbits. Oh my God. I, I will accept Buddha into my heart. <laughs> oh. Or oh Moses, God. the macaroni man himself. The macaroni man. Mm. that's a South Park joke people don't know that um, but anyways man fuck yeah dude let's make that happen please Ubisoft spend some money I'll, I'll drop 50 on the season pass if it's The Rock 
Uh, just... God damn it. <sighs> so good. Uh, anyways, um, jumping on in. You know, I really wanted to avoid it this week. I really wanted to do it. I'm like, we're not going to do it. We've talked about it a lot over the last month or so. Yeah. Uh, loot boxes, microtransactions. It's yep. still a thing. It, this ain't going away anytime soon. And no, Star Wars has has made it a whole nother issue. Uh, so, um, Hawaii, some state representatives from there, uh, have come out against loot boxes and had a hell of a yep. press conference, I believe Monday or Tuesday night. And, um, a few, uh, I have a few quotes here from them. I want to, I want to go over. Um, so this, these are all direct quotes I'm about to say from, uh, a couple of different representatives. Uh, so in a press conference, uh, state representative, Chris Lee, said he was taking action in order to ensure future protection for kids, youth, and everyone else. Uh, this game is a Star Wars-themed online casino designed to lure kids into spending money to trap. It's a trap! He said, that, that's really funny. I did, I did not realize that until I just read that out loud. That, that motherfucker just made a Star Wars joke and is, is bashing against a Star Wars video game. I know, right? It's amazing. This man, that is got, that, this guy is really good. This guy is good. I just hit my mic. I don't care. That's dude, awesome. Dude. Oh, man. What's even, what's even funnier, it's like just watching Jim Sterling's like a video this week or something like that. It's like that dude actually made like in his own words said it's a trap. Oh, shit. Really? I haven't watched it yet. In my, it's, in, it's in my watch later list. That's awesome. Fuck. Dude, I was going to bash this guy a little bit, but maybe not so much now. I'm going to feel a little bad about it. But anyways, going on, this is something we need to address to ensure that particular kids who are underage, who are not psychologically and emotionally mature enough to gamble, which is why gambling is prohibited under the age of 21 um, in the state of Hawaii is 21 or under. Some states are 18, some states are 21. Um, um, prohibited under the age of 21 are protected from being trapped into these cycles, which have compelled many folks to spend thousands of dollars in gamble, uh, gaming fees online. We're looking at legislation this coming year which could prohibit sale of these games to folks who are underage in order to protect these families, as well as prohibiting different kinds of mechanisms in those games, he explained. We've been talking with several other states as well as, uh, as, well as legislators who are looking at the same thing. I think this is an appropriate time to make sure these issues are addressed before this becomes the norm for every new game. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, State Representative Sean Quinlan, I believe is how you say his name, right. emphasized that Star Wars Battlefront 2 is a game that he believes is being marketed at young players. It's a AAA title that's being released by the world's largest gaming studio, and it has the most popular intellectual property in the world attached to it, and it's marketed squarely at children. So, here we are again. It is uh, personally something for me that is... Right. Uh, when it comes to gaming, and especially with this microtransaction stuff, the last thing we want is the government to get involved in gaming, and especially something like this. Uh, and that's not even a shot at Donald Trump. Like, yeah, God knows I hate Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. But this has nothing to do with him. The, them getting involved in gaming stuff uh, has been an issue for like 30 years, 20 years, going all the way back to Mortal Kombat. That's uh, pretty true. Going back to not only Mortal Kombat, but the Night Trap as well. I mean, if, trap, if, yeah. if it wasn't for the governments intervening back around the mid-90s, we would not have established the ESRB rating system that we currently yeah. have for today in this that modern was, times. Yeah, that was kind of like the... Uh, agreement that everybody came with like hey we'll make this rating system if you guys just stay the fuck out of it yes and they did yes. for like 20 something years 25 years uh, unfortunately now they seem like they're getting back into it uh, so now ea unfortunately ea you were the straw that broke the camel's back yeah. in terms of the loot box stuff i mean before the whole elements of the suggested loot box elements and stuff there was, like, maybe a couple games in the cross of, like, maybe a five- or six-year radius that actually implemented some form of loot box or some sort of, like, random microtransaction stuff. But now you're one of many companies that are in this year that has not... That's released maybe, like, what? 14, 15 different games in the past year that have implemented some sort of 
loot box or some sort of like microtransaction things where the main yep. majority of it was mostly structured somewhat around people buying these loot boxes, getting their own types of stuff in order to uh, get some sort of a little advantages or something like that. Of course, with EA, with Battlefield 2, that's kind of a different matter in and of itself because a lot of the stuff that you bought inside the game, like we've addressed in weeks before, actually did prove to have a lot of benefits for people who did spend the money in, like, online modes. So, basically, what we got going right here is not only just the whole the state of Hawaii and their and their like judicial system and stuff like that going forth saying that uh, they want to potentially stop the gaming company EA or something like that for spreading these sort of predatory like predatory like uh, behavior stuff which yes this is quintessentially what this is by EA for these loot boxes that are specifically aimed towards this specific brand of audience you know it's rated T for teen battlefront 2 yeah, that's it, my point. It's yeah. played by millions. This is a property that's going to be played by millions of people, including children, including adolescents, and including people who, you know, let's be honest, lack of a better term or something like that, they are going to overspend for stuff like this if the option is there. If not because they have issues with, like, say, spending lots of money or something on frivolous shit or whatever. But the point being was, I feel that this move by not only the Hawaiian government, but also by the country of Belgium and like going through and try to outright ban loot boxes in general and try to spread it across with the whole European area saying that they don't want this in terms of the video games because it does lead to a lot of these negative connotations. And it's basically going forth to like, say, try to oppose this current type of structure for loot box stuff but uh at the same time it, i'm just kind of like uh kind of a, i'm just kind of like a little bit worried as of uh as of today and stuff because it's like what you're saying before tyler this is this, this is definitely another page in another turn of where the government is going to get involved in terms of the video game industry and try to attempt <coughs> to regulate a couple different things about it like they have tried to do before with say like with say violence of video games or like try to like demonize certain video games because of specific things that are put inside the contents of this and that i mean basically the gaming industry has been through a hell of a lot in the past 30 years in terms of the content of what it's put in the artwork that it implements even to some extent some of the stories that have been told inside video games have tried tried to be censored by politicians we all know the guy jack thompson who that dude was a pretty much a Fuck big piece of guy. shit who tried to demonize like specific games and stuff like that out of like say his uh his overzealous like over like extremist sort of like viewpoint of like uh how he viewed video games in general which yeah. automatically led him to be pretty much banned from i think it was like banned from like that whole like judicial like stuff. he's disbarred he's disbarred he yeah. is disbarred completely from like not only testifying like in terms of video game stuff but in general it's like he cannot like go back to the law like that specific types of law stuff in order to argue those types but in this situation right here and of itself we're kind of put inside of like a dilemma as it is i mean one the video game industry yeah they are going to have to – publishers, big third-party AAA publishers are going to have to come together and try to reestablish what it is. They're going to try to regulate themselves to see how – if what is pretty much acceptable in terms of how they can actually come across with these loot boxes now. Because it's like what I said before. EA is the company that had the straw that broke the camel's back. They implemented too much – of the whole, like, stripped-down sort of features and stuff like that, the whole pay-to-win mechanic that has pretty much caused this controversy to begin with, now we, now the gaming industry in and of itself have to try to tone down the contents of what they will be offering in sort of this 
you know, and sort of what people were going to be getting inside these uh, particular types of things. It may not be loot boxes, but it could be something else entirely. It could be maybe a little bit of a price hike on some games and as an asset or something like that. It could be implementing these same type of things inside of season passes or something where something is going to go up in price. I mean, if they're not going to be doing loot boxes, you better believe that some of these AAA gaming publishers like EA and Activision, they'll try to find another fucking loophole around this. I mean, They'll get theirs. They'll get their fucking money. I mean, that's the thing about what makes these these AAA companies a little bit dangerous is because they're not happy with the billions upon billions of dollars or something like that they earn from games like Battlefield or from Call of Duty or from the millions of other microtransactions they got through the previous releases. If anything... These AAA companies are going to come up with something else to try to dissuade not only like the, the, you know, not only just like the European like sort of government. That's what's going on right now to try to ban the use of loot boxes. But if I'm right and stuff, and not just Hawaii, but other states in the United States go and follow suit, this is going to be probably going to be like a long type of legal battle between potentially. You know, the states and other types of countries and stuff against, like, AAA publishers like EA in terms of trying to battle what is acceptable going inside these loot boxes and what's not. I mean, we've talked about a good example of what, uh, how loot boxes can be, can be elemented in, like, a particular way that it's not really as harmful to the consumer, but in and of itself, it's actually not so bad and what you and i have talked about previously tyler has been through overwatch and how like some bits of like the content that you unlock through loot boxes is from actual gameplay that you can go through and like complete like for example if you're going through a couple of different type of multiplayer matches and stuff like that you win you earn like the bunch of these different currencies and stuff you do have elements to unlock certain loot boxes if you choose to i mean i know i've done this a couple of times i know you have before where it's like we played a couple of multiplayer matches. We've earned some points. Oh, hey, we have enough for a loot box. Let's go spin on a loot box. See what we get. Mm -hmm. The thing about this type of thing from, like, the Hawaiian, like, uh, their, like, judicial stuff there, and even for the people over Belgium, a lot of the games that were studied, one of them was Overwatch. The other one was Battlefield 2. So those two games are like the opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of loot box like usage. One of them barely uses it in terms of like, you know, in terms of actual like uh, online stuff. You know, maybe through like cosmetic things like different voices, different type of colors of like uh, costumes that a character can wear, wear. The other one being EA in the Battlefield 2 is implemented with the whole aspect of like uh, the whole pay to win certain things like certain weapons, certain like like equipment and stuff like that you can only use but it's being capped at a specific level you know it's it's a little bit scary to think that there could be possible government like intervention with uh, how the video game industry is going to try to work and do this and do that but at the same point i kind of feel that this has needed to happen for a little while now where there has to be some sort of regulation to try to prevent like predatory content from AAA publishers like an EA, like an Activision, like a 2K Games or whatever the hell that are trying not only to just nickel and dime us. I mean, hell, they're going to nickel and dime us regardless of what. But we got to keep in line the balances to where they're not using like overly blatant like predatory behavior in order to try to like not only get our money, but get the money from younger gamers too. That are going to be going through and say, oh, hey, I want to get this and this and this. I can't go through this game unless I spend this amount of money in order to do that. You know, like spending like maybe a couple hundred in their parents' credit card and doing this old shit and stuff. I mean, gold, mobile games have done that for years, too. But it's like, yeah, it's just so crazy. But what mm -hmm. do you think, Tyler? Um, So, no, uh, this is definitely uh, with to me. With with the government possibly getting involved here this is not the answer that i was looking for um you know we talked i talked about a little earlier with the mortal combat thing with like that whole part was stupid but and we're blown and not only just the government getting involved but the mainstream media getting involved is bad i think personally um before i even jump into the issues we're looking at here 
Um, where I look, I remember going back to like uh, uh, Mass Effect when like Fox News was that was bringing in like Jeff Keighley and Adam Sessler <laughs> and oh just my God. like putting him like just making them sound like the biggest assholes in the world and uh and they were 100 right jeff keely and adam sessler and they like watching those watching those interviews back it's like they destroyed fox news because they had no idea what to tell them they're saying mass effect is uh pornography and it's just a sex game is all it is and because there was one like 20 second barely sex scene where it's just like uh, generic music playing over it. There was no nudity, nothing. Yep. Uh, and it's just, we do not want Fox News getting involved in this either. Like, I oh, don't no. want to say, I, I would rather have, honestly, the Hawaii State representatives involved in this before I want Fox News involved in this. No shit. But, uh, um, no, it's just, and it's something that's been, some people will talk about for the last few months now about, uh, and the ESRB came out and said that they don't believe that loot boxes are gambling. Um, and it's, it's a tough... Mm. Uh, I mean, if you like, you look at the dictionary probably of what gambling is, this is loot boxes are probably gambling. Um, but it's, it's there's so many variables in this where like when you go to the casino and you play, like you're not always guaranteed to win something. When you, when you pay for the loot box, you're guaranteed to get something. Might not be what you want, but it's going to be something. Um... But I, I think about my examples I've heard from people, and it's for me, it's like, what, if we can't get around this, then how can we, if we can't, we're not considering that gambling, then why aren't we considering, uh, then how are we going to consider loot boxes gambling? When you have things like, uh, you go you go to the, the grocery store, and they have like the little quarter machine things, you put a quarter in, and you get a sticker, it's like, oh, like they have NFL stickers you can get, and it's like, oh, I want the Packers one, you put... 50 cents in, you get a Giants one. I'm like, ah, shit. I don't want, I don't want the Giants. And you put 50 more cents in, you get the Cowboys one. I'm like, ah, shit. It's like, how is, that's no different than a loot box at all. Yeah. Or if you go, or if you go and you buy, a, like when we were kids, buy a pack of Pokemon cards. That's a loot box. It's just a $3 loot box, $4, whatever it costs now. I don't know. Back in the day, it was like three bucks. Yep. You know, uh, you, you might get some cool shit. Remember, I, I, I spent thousands upon thousands of dollars back in the day on Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And I, and I'm just a Pokemon card. I probably spent thousands and never got a Charizard. My buddy bought one pack. His first pack he ever bought of Pokemon cards, got a Charizard in it. So pissed. Still a pissed about it. Uh, it's been like 20 years. Still upset about it. A little <laughs> bit hurt. Um, like, how is that at loot boxes? Like how, how are we are, how is that not gambling? Uh, it's just, we have, there have been ways to get kids to buy shit and collect things for decades now, before we were kids. And now we're going to consider this. The only thing I can think of now we're freaking out about more now than ever is the fact that like now a parent's credit cards are saved on the consoles yep. that we're buying those things from. Which, to me, like you said, this is a game that is rated teen. So 13 yep. and above. Uh, so to me personally, and maybe it's easier for me as somebody doesn't have kids it comes down to the parents responsibility to make sure that um there's their credit card information whatever if their kids playing regularly on these consoles don't save your credit card maybe on the consoles or i mean i have mine saved but i'm the one that uses it uh but i would say if you're somebody or put a password in it if you can uh i think there's a little bit of responsibility that goes into the parents or the guardians whoever um that if like, your kid's playing Star Wars Battlefront 2 or whatever, a game that ha- Overwatch, whatever, it has loot boxes, uh, anything like that, uh, it, to a certain extent, some responsi- responsibility relies on you. Uh, you can't just, here you go, here little Timmy, here little Johnny, whatever. Uh, here's here's the game you can play. Um, or here's the game you wanted, you know. Like, we have to, at a certain point, you have to take care of yourself. Uh, and I understand, like, there's a reason why uh, Steam and uh, big companies have psychologists on staff is to find ways to get people to buy loot boxes or buy the trick to get people to find the most um, <clears throat> the, the the most the way they can get the most money out of people like designing the website the, w- the way it is designing Steam or PlayStation Store or whatever designing in a way that 
where they're going to like entice people to come in and look. It's no different than going to the mall and say, ooh, that place looks kind of cool. I'm going to go in there and check that out. It's no different than that. Um, just now our credit cards, our information, or whatever, the way of buying things is now saved there. Um, yeah, it, and it's, there's so many variables to this, and there's no easy answer. That's the real reason I just didn't want to talk about the show and like the whole gambling and whole uh, – you know, to a certain point, I don't want to have a loot box for a while until we kind of have to, I thought. Right. But uh, especially the gambling. It's just like, yeah, is it gambling? Probably. Um, I, I guess my the best scenario I can think of for this is if you have loot boxes or you have extra content that's not a season pass that you can buy, then it should be part of the ESRB rating system where it's like, uh, you know, you have like violence or sex or um, uh, blood or whatever. Make that one of the things you put on the box. You know, it's rated... <coughs> I don't know if you want to make it mature, but it's rated teen, because, or it's rated E, or whatever, and a loot boxes or something is on there, uh, or microtransactions is on there. Uh, put it on there. The only issue I could find with that, though, is, is like you look at a game like Destiny, where a year and a half or two years in, they added, they added microtransactions to it. It's like they didn't have it for the, that beginning, so then also now they want to add it you can't really go you can like you can go back the games that come out like the, the copies you make after that you ship after that you can update but the games that have been out forever you can't update so right. I, don't, I don't there's too many there's too many ways around it um i don't know there's just no easy answer or no easy way of doing it that's the only true. thing i know for a fact is i just don't want i don't want the u.s at least the u.s government uh involved in this i'm curious what belgium's gonna do with this uh but yeah, I don't. I I think just putting a stamp on it. Yep, it's gambling. Uh, make all those games M or whatever for, or adult or whatever rating because it has loot boxes in it. I think is uh, the, the the a bad route to go. Right. Won't affect won't affect me or us. Uh, but I I think you know you look at like a movie like if a movie's rated R. Uh, parents are like are gonna, are gonna look more into it for them. Their kids see it, um, right? Or right. They're gonna, like, oh, they're just gonna like, oh, it's radar. You can't see that. You're, you're 15. Um, I don't know. It. There's so I, there's just like you think of it a solution, but then there's like one like tiny thing that can like you can bypass that. You know, like I like I just said about the whole like you can just add loot boxes later to a game and get around right. the e- ESRB. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, in order to try to tackle like this topic in general in terms of, like loot boxes and different things we have to more or less remember the basic stuff of what is gambling in and of itself the definition of gambling you know by looking at the dictionary term of gambling in general there's like one of two things it's a noun obviously and i'm reading this off of dictionary.com right now the first oh, definition the first definition that it says is the activity or practice of playing at a game of chance for money or other stakes. Where the second definition is the act or practice of risking the loss of something important by taking a chance or acting recklessly. We can think of it one of this way. In terms of, say, a chance of stakes, you know, spending money on a loot box to try to get a desired result of, say, getting a specific weapon that you want to do. And the important thing that you risk losing happens to be the money that you initially put in in order to spend for that type of things. You made a couple of good examples, though, Tyler, of like other things that possibly would be considered gambling that many people probably don't even think about or possibly don't even care about, too, or empathetic about, is the terms of, say, buying a pack of Pokemon cards. And like you said, you want to get that Charizard, but you gambled your money or something like that by buying a pack, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, I didn't get a Charizard. Now i got to gamble more money to try to get the same like, like desired results. That Great. in of itself is yeah. considered gambling to some effect, but at the same time, it's like what you were saying. It's like... It's sort of a different type of tier as it is, say, with the video game stuff as of itself. Whereas, yeah, it's gambling maybe on a little bit of a minor scale. There is still a thing that you can possibly win that's something that's uh, something. You're not losing really anything physical other than maybe like a few bucks in and of itself. 
but at the same time, you're spending money in order to get a guarantee of something rare inside of those packs. So, in terms of, say, what Battlefield is, it's like, potentially, there could be an argument made that you know, gambling inside the loot box things that you're buying inside there is like you are technically getting something that's of rare or something of a value and stuff like that without necessarily like completely losing getting nothing you know there's that argument that could be portrayed and stuff but in and of itself at the end of the day it's just exactly like you were portraying to tyler this is a very difficult terms of thing to try to explain and on top of that it's kind of it has a lot of different type of ramifications because it goes to the thing of what gambling like it just leads us to think of it's like what what is the definition of gambling in general to how is this going to be affecting maybe the gaming industry if so if the government happens to you know by chance partake in sort of like interfering in what uh the triple a gaming space is going to do and the three is if the government does not if the government is not going to go ahead and like go after EA or Activision for these type of predatory behaviors and stuff, what are they as AAA publishers going to go through and come up with in order to alleviate these loot boxes? Especially if in European countries, if they potentially do get banned, which is a very real possibility of happening, considering that Belgium is trying to rally other European countries in order to outright ban loot boxes in general inside games. So, at the end of the day, Tyler, it's like, I agree with you that this is very a complicated sort of situation that uh, is recently developed, but at the same time, there are a lot more questions that need to be answered, and it's definitely not going to be solved by any time this year, that's for sure. <laughs> no, there's going to be a long, drawn-out issue that, uh, like I said, I think this was the year that we kind of like, uh, I think this is a big year where it's going to decide the future of these microtransactions. Yep. Uh, and I thought, I felt what, I, I wasn't going to call it a win, but I, I thought, uh, as far as the winning of the war, but I thought it was a good, we, we gamers won the battle with, at least this past week with Battlefront 2. Yes. Uh, at least for now. Um, uh, so, who knows? I think this, I think this fall and beginning of next year is going to be a big factor, deciding factor in, what happens with uh, loot boxes and most definitely in gaming? So, uh, I don't hate them. Uh, I don't necessarily like the idea of them, uh, but we've seen ways they can be done well. Uh, yes. It's just a matter of how people do it and they build the games around it. If they're going to have it. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just a lot. It's, just, it's we can go. We could talk in circles for hours about this yeah. and. I'm sure the, if this continues on, uh, EA, Activision, whatever, government possibly, uh, will be talking in circles for days, hours, and months on end Yep. Uh, about this if it continues on. So I guess we'll kind of see in the next few months. And, I mean, maybe we might actually not – we might not really know what it's going to be like until next season, next holiday season when all the big AAA games come out. Oh yeah, see what they do. that's definitely I mean, going to be something to keep an eye on too. If the microtransaction thing is like the microtransaction loot box thing is like, if this is being questioned now in these type of big games and stuff, I don't know what's going to happen for the next year, like how some of these games are going to be advertised for, what they're going to be doing, because this is definitely going to be an interesting next uh, 12 months, that's for sure. Yeah, I think we'll get some more. We might not get some more answers until next holiday season when the next Call of Duty and all those games, Battlefield, whatever, Battlefield, Battlefront, whatever comes out, that might give us some uh, keep telling factors or NBA 2K uh, when all those come out. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's like, okay. NBA. It's like, I would definitely love to see less of the shit that happened with NBA 2K and by Battlefield 2. That's just my personal opinion, but that's just it. <laughs> yeah, no, I think everybody would, uh, and hope I hope it does. But I definitely don't want to be because the, the government made it so. I just True. hope that the gamers made it so. Uh, I think that'd be the best route for everybody involved. Um, so yeah, but um, you know, I think that might uh, wrap it up for the week, um, guys. Uh, I want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, 
check us out. Uh, we have a Facebook page and a group, uh, Drunk Nerds Podcast, on there. Like and join us uh, on Twitter at Drunk Nerds Pod. Follow us on there on YouTube, uh, Drunk Nerds, uh, Drunk Nerds Podcast. Sorry, uh, the drunk maybe it's Drunk Dash Nerds. Drunk Dash Nerds. Sorry. Uh, subscribe to us on there. Uh, podcast goes up on there. Uh, listen to us and give us a big thumbs up and a comment. We greatly appreciate if you did that. And on iTunes, Drunk Nerd, Drunk Dash Nerds Podcast, uh, subscribe to us in there. Give us a five star review if you can, and a comment would also be really great. Um, and also on Twitch, Drunk Nerds Podcast, uh, follow us on there and send us friend requests. Friends are good. We like friends, and we like you to be our friend. So do all that. Check us out on there, all those places. Thank you guys for listening. I was losing my voice, Tyler. And I have been Colonel Gable. So until next week, everyone, please get some sleep and definitely play some very awesome games. Yes. <laughs> See you later. Bye, guys. Excuse me. Give to me beers there. Anyways, we're on iTunes now, so go on there, check us out. And if you like us, leave us a review. And we'll even shout you out. And Jack will send you his credit card number. <laughs>